Okay, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to another Sunday afternoon. Here to come together to go into the Word of God and see what God has to say to us through the Scriptures and through His Spirit. Amen, hallelujah. I'm going to go today into the book of Jude, a New Testament book, one of the last books of the New Testament, a very interesting book, a very important book, amen. Not that all of them are not, there absolutely are, but you'll understand as we go into this why it is. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you in Jesus' name right now, God, asking for your direction and guidance, Lord, in all these things, and that you be glorified, God, in all that we say and do, Lord, that you, Word, would bless us and lead us to life eternal, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to go here to the book of Jude today, we're going to uh, look at something very, very, very important for our time right now. Uh, the book of Jude, let me give you a little background into the book of Jude first off. The book of Jude was written in the period of about 70 to 80 AD, somewhere there in about near the end of the first century. At least three decades had passed since the Lord had returned to heaven when Jesus had resurrected and ascended to heaven. And it had been said that the book of Acts describes the beginning of the institution of the local church. And it's also said that Jude deals with the end of the church age. And that's what we're going to look at with this uh, book of Jude, dealing with what the end of the church age is supposed to be like and is going to be like, and in fact is, amen? So we're going to look at that and a little more background. The Apostle Paul was martyred in about 67 AD, as well as Peter the same year. Peter died 67 AD. These are, I'm dealing with apostles that, they know when they passed, what happened, okay, and the dates, okay. The Apostle Andrew passed in about 60 A.D., Matthew around 74 A.D. The only remaining uh, Apostle past this time was John, and they recorded John as dying in about 100 A.D., amen. But all the other Apostles, for what we know, were gone just about prior or at the very time that this book, or just this book was written, in other words, just after all these apostles had passed, some of them years before, okay? So the book of Jude is a latter period book added to the New Testament, <coughs> excuse me, and it was written between 70 and 80 AD, somewhere in thereabouts, okay? After the death of many of the apostles were gone, Jesus had ascended, the apostles had been martyred, amen, except for John. John became the... Uh, the bishop of the New Testament church at the time, okay? So we see here in, um, just by a little history, that this book is dealing with, and Jude is talking about the things in the end times, what it's going to be like. If you read the whole book, the whole book is a book of warnings and um, exhortation about the, the spirit that will be in the last days, the things that will be even in the church, how the church will be, and things won't be like they should be. Okay, and his warnings. But I want to deal with something in particular right now, certain scriptures. I want to go to the book of Jude. That's uh, only one chapter, so it's starting in verse 17, Jude 1 and 17. And that's where I want to begin because I want to look at something where we are dealing with basically, <coughs> excuse me again, um, basically what we're dealing with is how to endure until the end, amen? How to endure till the end, all right? Jude is telling us and breaking down for us what it's going to take for the believer in these days and times we're in now. We're coming into these days at the end of it all, of the church age and, and the, this time period, this dispensation, if you want to call it, this dispensation of grace and time. Okay, we're nearing the end of this, okay? We're right there. Jude is giving direction here on how to be able to endure until or until the end. Amen. We're going to look at this. Jude, uh, starting at um, verse 17. It says, But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. And here he tells us the apostles had already spoke. He's writing this book time after all the apostles had written their their letters in the book of Acts and all the other epistles prior to this one, okay? This latter epistle, he said, Beloved, remember ye the words 
which was spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. Okay? And are we seeing that? Boy, how are we now? Verse 19, these be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. And that's capital S on the Spirit. They don't have the Holy Spirit. And there's so much so-called Christianity out here right now. They don't even believe that you have to have the Holy Spirit. Don't even know what the Holy Spirit is about. And they're trying to tell you how to be saved and how to live. And these are the ones he's talking about. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, watch this, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And some have compassion, and of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Amen. Now there's a whole lot in this, this, this package in these few verses right here about what we should be doing and how we should be doing it in these last days. Amen. Okay, let's, 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 let's review it. Let's break it down and look at some of these things so that we can understand as believers what it's going to take to endure until the end. Amen. To make it until judgment, okay? And stand before God in righteous judgment. He talks about how they'll be, how the apostles warned of what would be in the last day, okay? And what would be like. And there would be mockers in the last time who should walk up their own godly lust. And they're all around us. You see it everywhere. All these homosexuality and these abortions clinics and all these people that hold these things up and think they're good and right and they mock, okay? And they they come against the people of God. They hate God. They hate us. They hate believers. And we surely are seeing that in this day and time. You watch. You mark these words. Very soon, you're going to be considered a domestic terrorist if you're a Christian because you don't go along with what everybody else goes along with. So you're a hater. Therefore, you are a terrorist. And those days are upon us now. We're even seeing those things start to happen now, okay? And these mockers and these people would walk after their own ungodly lust. And that is precisely what they're doing now in this world, amen? These pedophiles and perverts, and even in so-called the church, what would the people could call the church, which is not, which is falsely called because they're just mockery of the things of God, trying to tell you you can be saved a different way than what the apostles taught, than what Jesus said, amen? And that's what Jude is dealing with here, okay? Verse 19, these be they who separate themselves, sensual, that means earthly, content, uh, bound to the earth and earthly things, carnal-minded, worldly, okay? Having not the Spirit, capital S, or the Holy Spirit. They don't even have the Holy Spirit, and they're trying to tell you how to be saved and live for God. Whether it's be, be wealthy or all these other things, or you can do whatever you want. Grace will take care of it. You can live in sin. You can be a pervert. You can do whatever you want to do as long as uh, grace is there. Grace has got you covered, your sins. And that's a false, that's a lie. That's a false doctrine, a false teaching, straight out of hell, amen? Okay? But then he goes on to say, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Watch this. Praying in the Holy Ghost. I want to talk about that for just a minute here. When we pray, a lot of the church, all they do now, and I'm talking about the true church, I'm not talking about these people that claim to be saved and claim to believe in Jesus and don't follow the word and don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit and the miracles and the operation of things that are still, in fact, in operation until the Lord returns. All those that say, oh, that's not for today or that's of the devil, they're of the devil, okay? That's a lie from hell. I am talking today to you believers who follow the truth, okay? And if you're looking for truth, this is the truth. You might as well get a hold of the real thing from the beginning. Any of you that are just starting out now, you're hearing this teaching, there's a reason. You need to know what the Bible says about all these things, okay? 
Not what men say, what men want to make up, or what they want to twist it to be so they can live like they want to live and still claim to be saved. All they're trying to do is ease their guilty conscience to make themselves think they'll go to heaven. But in the end, when they stand before God, it'll be an unrighteous judgment they receive. Amen. So we're looking here. Beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Faith? Faith? Is what it's going to take. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, the Bible says. They that come to him must believe that he is. He is what? Real? That he exists and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Not halfway seek him. Don't bend your own religion for whatever reason. Amen. But because we have to do it the way God says to do it. Amen. And that's all there is to this. Okay? We have to do it God's way. We have to be saved God's way. We have to believe God's way. We have to do God's will. Amen. We have to do what the word of God says, the Bible says. We have to walk in that, in the scripture. Okay. But beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Watch this. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. When you pray, and a lot of people pray, they pray with their own understanding. They pray with your words, your lips, okay? They pray, but the Bible says, and Jude says here, that you praying in the Holy Ghost. And the Bible talks about being renewed in the Spirit daily. And when you pray, pray with understanding in the Spirit also. That's praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, praying in the gifts of the... <coughs> Excuse me, getting worked up here. Praying... In the gifts of the Spirit, amen? We need not only to pray with our own understanding, but to pray in the Holy Ghost as well, amen? And keeping ourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And some people witnessing now, talking to unbelievers, and of some have compassion, making a difference. Show compassion and love, because that will win them over, Okay? They will see your compassion and your love for God and your fellow man and they will believe and they will receive. Amen. But watch what verse 23 says. Now I hear pastors out here all the time. Oh, you can't be too hard. You can't come down on them. <coughs> Excuse me again. Wow. <coughs> Getting choked up yet. Anyway. And you can't, uh, you got to be sweet and loving. You do on some, but watch this, verse 23. And others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. You got to tell them what they're doing is sin, and it's wrong. If they're living in a, an abominable way, an ungodly way, doing ungodly things, they need to know what they're doing is wrong. You can't just tell them, oh, Jesus loves you, do what you want to do, everything's all right. That is not what the Bible says. We see here, others we must witness to telling them what the sin in their life is and that what they're doing is wrong and it's going to take them straight to hell if they don't repent and turn away from it, amen? And even in the church, there are people in the church who claim to be saved and Christians that have been overtaken by the devil and they're living in abomination. They're living in adultery and sin and some may even think it's all right with God. It's not all right with God. They need to know it's not all right with God. These are the ones we save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. It must make them understand that sin is wrong, what they're doing is wrong, how they're living is wrong. Amen. And that if they don't repent and turn from it, they will go to hell. That they cannot be saved. Sinner, you can't be saved living like this. There has to change take place in your life. Church person, believer, if you think it's all right to go to church because you're going to church, you can live however you want, do what you want to do. That is absolutely not correct. We see here in the book of Jude, Jude tells us how to live, how to pray, and how to endure to the end. If you want to be saved, you must be obedient to the word of God. You must have the spirit of God in you. God must be in you, living in you, directing and guiding you into all truth. Amen. This is what the word of God says. This is what we must do. This is what the book of Jude 
is showing us right here, this latter day book. They've already begun to experience at this time the perversions to Christianity that began to take place even back then. Leading up to 325 AD when the big perversion, Catholicism comes, okay, in 325 AD and tries to change Christianity altogether. But God did not allow that to happen. He kept the remnant and he kept truth there. And there has always been a remnant obedient to this truth, amen? God has always had a people. His people have never gone. There's always been an obedient remnant, whether or how small, through history. And now God has brought it back to where it needs to be in these last days that you could be saved by the truth of the word of God. Amen. If you're going to endure, you better be praying in the spirit. You better be full of the Holy Spirit. You better be anointed and blessed by the power of God, standing in the word of God, obeying the word of God, turning your back on sin and perversion and garbage. Okay. Knowing that these things don't please God having the Holy Spirit living in you to help you do this, that you don't even have to do it on your own. The Spirit of God will lead and guide you, amen? We have to know and understand this and walk into this truth, okay? The book of Jude tells us how in the last days to endure until the end, amen? Uh, enduring until the end. Standing strong on the Word, being full of the Holy Spirit, praying in the Spirit, always praying. Every time you pray, you are able to reach out to God and move into that place with him that the spirit of God will speak through you and give you utterance and you will pray in the spirit. And like the 10 wise virgins or the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins, the 10 virgins, the five foolish didn't have enough oil or enough Holy Ghost in their life to bring them through to the end, amen? That's what that parable is speaking of. All right, understand that you need to be prayed up full of the Holy Spirit. Always pray in the Spirit, amen? Every chance you pray, you pray and, and, and move into the presence of God and God's Spirit just begins to overwhelm you and renew you and fill you completely with God's Spirit. As you begin to speak in other tongues and the power of God ministers through you in a heavenly language, amen? And for you that don't believe that tongues are for today or of God, you're very much mistaken because God has never done anything that started it out good and it turned out to be bad. That's ridiculous, amen? You better know what you need to happen in your life and you need the Holy Spirit, amen? You need to be praying in the Spirit. You need to be full of the Holy Spirit to be able to endure in these last days. Otherwise, you won't make it. I have people very close to me that didn't pray. They didn't stay prayed up. They just, they played in the flesh. They played with their lives, they played with perversion, and now they're out there possibly headed to a reprobate mind because of their actions. Because in these last days, instead of taking the things of God seriously and walking in the things of God and the Word of God and the Spirit of God, they played around, ran around in a bunch of prideful ignorance and, are, and they're, not, they're not even serving God. They think they are, but they're not. And they're on their way to a devil's hell because they would not do these scriptures told them to do. Amen. We must understand that in this last day and hour, we have to be full of the Holy Spirit, staying in the Word of God, being diligent. Amen. Walking in truth, making ourselves and our lives about the things of God and not about the things of this world, not about our personal pleasures and our desire to sin and to do things unto the flesh, but to do things unto the Spirit. Amen. Being full of the Holy Spirit. We see ahead what he said about those that don't have the Spirit. They're out there doing what they want, preaching a lie, living however they want, and thinking they're saved. Right? He said, 19, these be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. That's not us, church. That's not us, true church. If you pastors out there preaching anything else, shame on you. You don't have a business being a pastor. You are not out there teaching the truth, <clears throat> speaking the truth. If you're not out there rebuking the ones that need to be rebuked and told that they are living in sin, if you're just trying to be everybody's buddy, you're not doing it right. You're not helping anybody. You better fall on your face and repent and make yourselves right with God. We all need to be right in this last day. Amen. Walking according to the scriptures, 
pray in our understanding and in the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is what it's about. This is what the book of Jude's telling us will cause us to endure until the end. Amen. I hope this works, helps you, blesses you. Please take it very seriously because this is the time we're in. We don't have a lot of time left in this church age. Amen. We need to be prepared. We need to be doing the will of God so that we can be saved in those last days. Amen. In these last days, we're there now. And that when the end does come, however it comes, we'll be right with God and we'll hear well done and not depart from me. Amen. Lord bless you all. I appreciate you. You know how to get in touch with me if you want to to discuss this further. Lord bless you.